Is it finally time to buy yourself a Gen 4 SSD in 2023? Well, in today's video, we are going to be comparing a Gen 4 drive versus a Gen 3 drive versus a regular SATA SSD and a traditional hard drive. But in today's video, we are not only going to be looking at the gaming load times, but also running some other tests. For instance, if you're a video editor, you can really benefit from having a Gen 4 drive. And also, if you're a speed user, you can also benefit from these drives too. But more on that later, today's video is sponsored by Silicon Power and their XS70 lineup of drives. Now, as you guys know, I only take sponsored videos if the product has merit. And I've been using this XS70 drive in my main computer, as well as my benchmark test system to really stress the performance over the last couple of months. Now let's get straight into those gaming load time numbers where the first game that we tested here was the latest Spider-Man Miles Morales. And here's where we did a straight click play to the load screen when we first see the Sony Interactive message. And here's where we see the Gen 4 drive edging out the Gen 3 drive. And then also the SATA is coming in pretty close, but you'll notice the hard drive is falling quite a bit behind in this test. Another game that we'll pull up here is Horizon Zero Dawn, where again, the same trend happens with the Gen 4 drive edging out the Gen 3 drive, as well as that edging out the SATA drive, then that beats the HDD by a big margin. However, I do hear from people sometimes that SATA drives can be faster at loading up games than Gen 4 drives and Gen 3 drives, for example. However, I do recommend if you're using any drive for performance, especially in Microsoft Windows, there is a setting where if you right click on the drive and go to properties and then go into policies, you can turn off Windows write cache buffer flushing on this device. This will essentially increase the performance of any SSD drive. And I do recommend it to get the best results possible. Though the next test I will throw up for you guys is really where the Gen 4 drive starts to shine. And that is the Adobe Premiere Pro video editing benchmark that I'm gonna show for you guys where I'm loading the files. I've got about 80 gigabytes of video files and I'm loading them into my project. And here's where if you've got faster read speeds available, this is where your Gen 4 drive is gonna take advantage of those read speeds and load those files into your project as fast as possible. And here's where the Gen 4 drive came out well ahead of the Gen 3 drive. And then that came out well ahead of the generic SATA drive. However, the hard drive was actually quite slow at this test. And I don't recommend a hard drive for video editing, especially if it's 4K video editing. Now the final few things we're going to touch on here in performance is things that are often not that well spoken about in reviews or in other videos that I watch when people are comparing SSDs. And that is both the consistency of the performance and the random 4K read and write single threaded performance. Where here's where we're looking at these two results. Where the first test we'll get out of the way with is the 4K random read and writes on all these drives here. And this is where the Gen 4 drive is coming well ahead of all the other competitors in this particular benchmark. And this means that the faster these times are, coupled also in with the setting below that, the access times, here is where you'll get great benefits out of not just a snappier system, but you'll get faster usage in general when you're using your computer. And this is because the majority of the actions performed on a PC actually use 4K random read and writes. These are very crucial for having a fast system. It's basically why if you run your operating system or your whole PC just off a hard drive, you'll notice it's a lot slower than a SATA drive, but you also notice if you've got a Gen 4 or even a Gen 3 drive, for example, that will feel snappier and faster than a standard hard drive or even SATA SSD. Now the final test that we're gonna perform here comes down to one that I always look for when I'm using a drive as a main video editing SSD. And this is the consistency of performance. And here's where the XS70 drive really shines above all the other drives here. Running my torture test through a program called HD Tune Pro, I do a 100 gigabytes read and also write test to stress not just the performance, but also the consistency of that performance and look for any dips. And here's where this XS70 drive performs phenomenally well across this whole range, getting those advertised 7,000 megabyte speeds on both read and write consistently across this whole range. If I'm to throw up the other drives in the comparison here, you'll see that the SN570 from Western Digital, for example, starts to dip off very quickly into this benchmark. And also the reads are quite inconsistent from time to time. And if we look at the SATA drive, that's also really slow. And the hard drive, I just couldn't even do this test 
because it would just take too long. So basically when it comes to buying an SSD, there's so much more than just those simple benchmarks that we did earlier in the video. There's actually quite a few more benchmarks I run through to really weed out the winners from the losers. And this XS70 from Silicon Power is definitely a winner. We're gonna go a little bit more in depth into this drive right now, where when I looked at the price, both in America and Australia, where I'm currently at, the price to performance is extremely good. In fact, it's some of the best price performance if you're looking at a benchmark like ASSD and comparing those performance numbers per dollar. And here's where you can get the two terabyte version for around 170 US dollars. And if you're looking for the four terabyte version, that'll set you a little bit over $400. However, these drives do carry very generous warranties up to five years and up to 3000 terabytes written on the four terabyte. And then that goes down to 1400 terabytes written on the two terabyte and then 700 terabytes written on the one terabyte. So all these options will make for a great scratch drive for video editors. It will also make for a fantastic OS drive that you can load up all your games on. Though one thing to keep in mind is you will have to have a modern PC setup that supports generation four X4 on the PCIe M.2 slot. However, one thing you may also notice from some of the video footage you've seen on this drive is that it also comes included with a heatsink. And on a generation four SSD, I think this is an absolute crucial thing to have because if you don't have this, your SSD can overheat and that can affect performance and sometimes even kill the drive itself. So if you're going with an SSD, a gen four drive, always recommend having a heatsink on it. Here's where the XS70 comes included with a heatsink that you can take that off with relative ease if your motherboard, for instance, has its own included heatsink and you wanna keep that aesthetic. Also speaking of temperatures, they remained in the low 70 degrees when we were running our stress tests here and the ambient conditions were quite hot on this day. It was going up to around 29 degrees C. So this drive will perform really well in all environments. Lastly, Silicon Power also include monitoring software, which you can download from their website if you wish to monitor things like temperature and drive health. Though with all that out of the way, it's finally time to answer that question of, do you need a Gen 4 drive? And here's where I'm gonna say it's not a necessity for people who are casual gamers or people that are putting together a gaming PCs on an extreme budget. But I think with the value that they're offering now, Gen 4 drives should be a must in every high-end PC as well as every workstation PC that can support them. The difference that they make for workstations is huge, but also the difference it can make in terms of latency and just snapping around from day-to-day -day tasks for power users is also going to be very appreciated as well. So definitely in terms of value, they have come a long way over the years, and this drive in particular uses high quality components from top to bottom, including a Fizen controller, as well as an SK Hynix SLC burst bank going up to 220 gigabytes of burst speeds. And then they're also using Micron TLC three layer NAND. Anyhow guys, if you've stayed this far, I'm saving the best till last where I've teamed up with Silicon Power to offer the Australian viewers a discount code by using the link in the description below, as well as the code. So you can save some money on getting one of these drives here today. But also another thing I really like about Silicon Power is they have their own store on Amazon. So if you're buying their drives, you're buying directly from Silicon Power, meaning there's really no risk of getting a fake drive, whether it's an SSD, a memory card, or a USB stick. And so that's one thing that's been really consistent with Silicon Power over the years, but now they really wanna make their value known to the world, and they're coming to people like Tech Yes City to help that happen. So I've been very impressed with what this brand has to offer, but they've also got some other products they sent over here. They've got, for instance, a one terabyte USB stick, that carries speeds that's even faster than the one terabyte SATA SSD we used here today. So you could basically use this USB as an OS main system drive if you wish to. Then they've also got some DDR5 memory, which besides the five year warranty on the SSDs, their RAM carries lifetime warranty and it's actually extremely good value for money on DDR5, where I can see in America, you can get a 32 gigabyte kit of this stuff with RGB and heat sinks for $125. And I also managed to take this stuff up quickly to 6,000 megahertz, which is the sweet spot on Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, but is also a great speed for Intel 12th and 13th gen systems too. So I'll put some links in the description below. Big thanks to Silicon Power for sponsoring out today's video. If you guys have any questions or comments, then be sure to drop them down below. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always.
Just like this question of the day here, which comes from Thomas Mahes, and they ask, why not get a Ryzen 5 5500 CPU, which is better for the same price? And they're referring to our gaming PC we recently built with a Ryzen 5 3600. And the reason we went with a Ryzen 5 3600 is because at the end of that video, I actually put together that PC with used parts, but also another reason why I didn't use the 5500 was because the price went up in the US from $100 to $140. So if I'm in the market for either of these two CPUs, the first thing I'm going to do is check which one is cheaper. And in that case, when I did that video, the Verizon 5 3600 was cheaper than the 5500. However, I do recommend both these CPUs, just get whichever one is cheaper. However, the Ryzen 5 5500 doesn't have Gen 4 on the PCIe. The Ryzen 5 3600 does, meaning if you got the 5500, you wouldn't be able to couple it with this beautiful XS70 drive that we featured in today's video. Anyhow, hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. I'll put some links in the description below for you guys to check out where you can get one of these awesome drives from. And if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.